Right, back in again. That's my new catchphrase for when I'm in. So today, what I thought I would do was um, try and explain pretty basic, simple way of reading the map with a compass. Not something I do very often, to be fair, like, I might be a little bit rusty. It's been a long time, but you can never not have this sort of knowledge. I can do it. Um, just use the Ranger. it's a lot easier. But always have a map with you, just in case it doesn't work. Uh, you can use View Ranger in conjunction with the map, whereby you can open it, find out where you are, and then you can work out from the map where you are. If it's like foggy or you're in the cloud or whatever, View Ranger gives you some good idea of where your actual position is. That's if you take it. You should you should take it, and um, and then you get your map to find out where you want to be. Because with View Ranger, you can walk in the wrong direction. I've done that myself. You, you go off in the wrong direction, but if you walk like 100 yards and you start recording the track, then it'll show you the black line, it'll show you where you've gone and where you're going wrong. So it's basically just a little brief little exercise in very, very basic map reading. Very basic. Right, so very, very straightforward. You've got the compass. This is your base plate. Let's see through so you can see through. <laughs> you've got two scales. You've got millimeters and inches on this one. Some of them have got, like this is a 1 50,000, so it'll have the 1 50,000 range on the inside there. Or the 1 25,000 on there. A lot of the silver compasses are very more detailed. This is a Rector one. It's just a pretty, pretty basic one. Plus it's got a bubble in it. Which doesn't help. So, you've got your, um, your bearing point here. This is where you get your bearing from, this mark. This is your arrow travel of direct, direction of travel arrow. It all ties in. Then you've got a map like this. The top is pretty much always the north, so that's always north of this. So it doesn't matter which way you've got it round, you're always going to have the north point there. So if you find north on your compass, and you want to, you can turn it so it's pointing north, so you're on the north grid there. Do you know what I mean? So you've got your north is always that way. Compasses read magnetic north, so you've got to allow... Um, there's a, there's a difference between true north and magnetic north. It's already like a couple of mil, couple of degrees. It tells you on the um, legend of the map what it is. For that area, it'll tell you. Check the date as well, because they update them quite regularly as well. So the, the difference between true north and magnetic north can be a couple of degrees. I'm not going to bother with all that now. Like That's different. That's a different video. The legend on there is NZ. It's just the area, and you've got these marks up and down here. So to get where you want to go anyway, to keep it simple, you find out where you are. So I'm here, South Beach. I want to go to Seaton Sluice, right? So put my map between the two points, so South Beach and Seaton Sluice. I'll put my baseline there and there. Try and keep it near the road, so you've got all path if you're in the middle of nowhere. Try and keep it on the path. Just have a look for obstacles in the way, like you know, like houses, buildings, roads, dual carriageways, because you're gonna have to get around them, cross them. But for now, it's just simple. We keep it that way. That's about it's about two mile, two and a half mile. That. So when you've got your compass there on your line between your two points, these lines in the middle. These are your orientation lines. So you've got, and you'll always have this, it like, could be either like a, um, another sort of like see-through needle or whatever. There's always something that tells you that, that that is your shed. You keep your red in the shed. I read that somewhere. So you get it, your orienteering lines. So you get your line there, 
and you turn the bezel until it's them lines there inside are lined up with these straight lines here these horizontal lines you've got to get them lined up because that's you getting your north then right so that's lined up there all inside right so you keep that you keep that bearing there it is bearing of 149 so with you with your adjustment for your magnetic and your true that'll probably be on a bearing of 150 just work that out see what it see what it is so when you've done that when you've got that and you've lined your lines up you then keep your arrow pointing that way you don't move the bezel you move the compass until that red needle goes inside there so that red needle is pointing north so you keep that pointing north and you are traveling that direction and if it moves you just turn it keep it in the middle move it so what you can do is where you set off you set off from there and you can see whatever you can see if you can see a landmark like a, um, a bus stop a couple of hundred yards down the road set off on that bearing towards the bus stop you'll know you're going the right way because then when you stop at the bus stop you check it again obviously you know this this applies when you're in the mountains I'm just using this map as a demonstration <laughs> so you stop at the bus stop or your trig point or whatever your tree your lake and you do that again but you're a bit further on now so you, you do the same thing line up your bezel turn your compass so your arrow is in the middle and then you set off again. You can do that for another 100 yards, or if you can see further, do it further. It doesn't have to be 100 yards, that's if it's foggy or cloudy, you can use these landmarks to plot your route. And if, as long as you keep that in, the, the two, in between the two guidelines there, you follow that arrow there, you'll always be going the right way if you've, if you've done that properly. It's very important to line them up that way because if you do it that way with that at the bottom you'll be going south instead of where well, you'll be going in totally the opposite direction to where you want to go so you've got to keep this this mark here all compasses have got that that's where you keep your um keep your needle in that thing there and follow the arrow what was it about 150 Speak about there, shouldn't I? Right, so yeah, that's lined up. So yeah, you just travel in the direction, and as long as you do that, you should always be able to find your way. It gets a lot more complicated. You know, you've got um, your degrees, your magnetic degrees, your true north degrees. You've got little obstacles that you come to, like these are dual carriageways. So you have to you have to try and work out the path. And if you're in the lakes, of course, you've got the hills. So you read the contour lines. The, the closer the lines are together, the steeper the hill. And if the lines are spread far apart, then it's normally quite easy. But as far as it goes, just as a demonstration there, because I know that's the right way, that's why I did it. Because I know that, that arrow is pointing exactly where you should go to get down the suit sluice from here. So that's it, pretty basic. Keep it simple. How to give it um, a grid reference is, and it does tell you here, it tells you all about it here. So you've got, they've got a sample point there, White Lee, right? And they're giving you 43.9, your Eastings. So your Eastings run along the bottom. So 43.9, so you've got 43, these squares are in tenths. They're supposedly 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 10 in one square. You've got, to, um, you've got to imagine it, estimate it. Tells you there, estimate the tenths from the grid point. So 43, you look at 43, 
and then you estimate 0.9 so that's 44 so you want to go back one so that's your 43.9 right and then you quote your northings northings is the ones that go up so it says 44 44 and then 7 tenths 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 is up here somewhere so you go up and along and there's white lee there which is the sample point so if you don't if, if you don't know how to do that it tells you here it tells you here how to read how to read them so you can always give a grid point a grid reference you can look on your view ranger and at the top of the view ranger it has these numbers sometimes a little bit more detailed but these are the basic numbers in the map sheet have all different letters on so if you tell Mountain Rescue you're on NZ 439447, they'll, they'll know exactly where you are. Whiteley. So 439, and count seven. And that works, that works for the whole map really. You just go like 34, 3445 is there. 35. 43 is here and then obviously your tenths so if you're halfway along see so the public house there shud fourth public house i've actually been in that pub 34 4 and 41 0 i would say 34 4 41 0 is the pub so that's your Eastings and your northings. So you give this you give this one first. When you're using a reference, you give the bottom one first. It tells you there. It tells you there how to do it. And just to show that if you get the view ranger, you've got this. Oh. This is the public house there. And the grid reference is telling you there, NZ 33983, so it's pretty much 34, right, it's very zoomed in, and this scale up here, th so 33, 34, that's 34 line there, that's a 34, this line here is your 76 line, no that's 77, 76 is there, so it's 76, Seven six nine. So it's about seventy six eight. See, so and there's the public house. And there's the public house. The pub. So you can you can get your location from the view ranger. So if you just tap the. E my camera works shocking. I can't see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do the camera and this at the same time. So if you tap that, this just gives you the red circle is where you are. And that's the grid line. So I'm off I'm off this one. So it's like 80. This just goes up just under 80. Just under. So I'm just about here. I'm just under the under the radar there. So you'll never find us. That's it.